Uh huh. Hello, anyone who might be watching. I haven't done videos in a while because my life's a freaking mess at this time. <laughs> but enough of that. I'm not going to give you the tech crap because I'm sure you've heard enough with everything else. Everybody's got their problems, so. Yep, yeah, I'm just going to leave that off the table. <laughs> but uh, that's why I don't make too many videos lately. It's just stupid. But I deal with it somehow. Uh, yeah, for for now at least. Huh? Ugh. Anyhow, enough of that, enough of that. Uh, what I'm going to show you is you can make music on a browser with this browser app um, at Chumbus. Bitbucket.io right here. If you use that address, uh, you get this neat little browser app. And uh, what it does is it lets you make music, and it works quite well in Firefox, and I heard it does okay in Edge, but Chrome, for some reason, has some bugs or something. It, it can act up. <laughs> but I haven't had that problem because I use Firefox most of the time. Uh, anyhow... What you get is like a pattern sequencer kind of thing, or a, it's like a, di a digital audio workstation in some ways, but it doesn't have all the features of a digital audio. But it lets you generate uh, synthesis on a computer. There's better tutorials on this, by the way, if you look for Beepbox. I think I'll put that in the video description, along with just a direct link to that. and. If you got anything else to say in comments, yeah, do that. Most of the stuff here is self-explanatory. Like, if you go over something, you'll see a question mark, and you can click on it, and it'll tell you what those things are, kind of. So it's not the hardest thing to figure out. Um, preferences, you can change how it views on the screen, and stuff like that. And... Let's see, is it for, is your file? Well, file, you can also uh, view it in a player mode. It'll show you like the score sheet. And you go back to edit to go back to this. Um, What else is there? Your whole score that you make as a song is actually stored in this address that follows the link here. So if you link this complete thing up here at your browser, that will be your song. Which is kind of neat, but if you just want to give somebody a file or put it on your mp3 player or something, you can also um, export a song and then it will generate the file and you can do wave, mp3, me, all that. And I think JSON is just for doing it in other web apps or something. Oh. I mean, I click export. There's nothing here yet. <laughs> Nothing to export, really. but when you make a score, there will be, uh, what else is there, uh, you can recover and all that, um, shorten URLs and stuff, uh, but the full URL is what contains the song. Uh, I think the shortened ones are temporary, too, so you gotta be aware of that if you do it that way. Um, what is the preferences? Blah, blah, blah. Edit, it kind of... It'll show your different uh, keys on the keyboard, so like C is for copy a pattern and paste a pattern, and you can actually hold down shift and stuff like that, and I think that one's return. And it shows the hotkeys after the edit operations. Uh, what else is there? If you go down here you can actually scroll down and it will tell you about it it's uh so yeah it's not like you're completely blind going in here you can scroll down and you get you get the full instructions so you don't even have to have me tell you yeah it tells you all the hotkeys uh scrolling down here and this is also neat is you can download the html file the offline version so that way you can go save link as, and that will be an HTML file, so you don't even have to be active online. So if you save that file on your computer or your tablet or whatever, as long as you have a browser, you can open that, and it will let you edit scores that way. Um, and if you're interested in uh, 
making a spin-off program or musical programs based on a browser. The source code is released. It's like open source, I think. So it's under the MIT license. But if you want to try messing around and making your own spin-off music tool, you can do that, which is neat. So if you wanted to make a more traditional score editor, but you wanted to figure out how the music generator underpinnings worked for this, it's like there in the source. So, uh, yeah. But I think uh, since it's browser based, you're going to see the source anyways, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's ob it's probably not obfuscated, but it's probably better explained in the other file or something. <laughs> uh, why should it be obfuscated if it's a uh, open source, right? Anyhow, enough of all that. Let's try to make a song here. Uh, we have right now three instrument patterns, so I don't know if you can hear that. It's probably coming in through the microphone on my laptop, just because I'm not dicking around with setting the audio settings, but <laughs> I just end up getting feedback loops if I mess with that stuff anyway, so eh, whatever. So I got three different instruments, which I'm probably going to change, and a drum pattern. So you can do, and hit play, you know, whatever. Is it? You, you click on it once to add it, click on it again to make it go away. And you can stretch them out. Make it like a left ride or something. But note, if you're doing drum patterns and you're trying to do overlapping things like a long ride or something, it's not going to work in the same pattern because all the pattern beats are synced up. And it's the same in other instruments. If you're doing uh, separate note timings for a same group, you're just going to have to duplicate an instrument and do it that way. Just a little could be, uh, yeah, it's, you have to work around it somehow. Um, at least that's how I think you'll work around it. You just have to add more. Speaking of which, I am going to, uh, where the channel settings? I am going to add two more pitch channels. I don't know if I'll need them. Drum channels, I'll leave the same. And I'm going to add two mod channels. Patterns per channel, I'll make it a dozen, but it could be increased later on. Um, Alright, something like that. I can stop playing, pause it. And right now there's no notes in any of these patterns. I think what I'm going to do is a chord pattern. I don't know if I want that new age pad, so I'm going to change that instrument and you get a whole bunch of different kinds of instruments. Uh, uh, How about distortion, retro? Square lead, that's a square wave. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, novelty presets sometimes. This is cute. It's a short note. Okay. I'm looking for something longer, like a pad type thing or an instrumental type thing. Uh, soundtrack, maybe? Uh, it's like a brass sound stuff. So. No, it's under novelty. Uh, soul scan fifth solid. I don't know if I want to do that though. I think I just might go back to uh, retro and too much uh, vibrato there. Uh, Do 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 do. Oh, 
Okay, it could work. Uh, and I think I'm going to do a four chord progression of some sort. <laughs> so. Do. Um, I don't want the arpeggio though. So. It's trying to do the chiptune style, it kind of defaults to that for something, so. That's why you get that picture. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for... All right, let's play around with this and see how this is. So, so I'm going to go back to the first measure in here. And right now it's going to loop this thing as your looper right here. You can just drag it. So I'm just going to loop between this first four and this pattern and see how this progression sounds. Uh, so here's the four chords, one, two, three, four, and track two. If you want, you can name these, although the naming doesn't show unless you hover it, unless you're looking through menus, sometimes it'll show up in there. But you can like click on it and rename them and stuff like that, but that's just pitch one right now. But you can rename them, and sometimes for stuff like this, it's handy. Like if you're grouping them, uh, like I said, where you have like a longer note, it plays over shorter notes, but they're all part of the same thing. It might be a good idea to name them, just so you know what the groups are. But like I said, it doesn't show here, at least. It might show in, uh, is it in preference? Uh, I don't know. Well, it might be here, but uh, <laughs> I don't use this enough to really know. but I'll figure something out to go with it, I guess. <laughs> uh, so that's that. And this is the modulator. So what I'm going to do is modulate these into a kind of beat pattern. Uh, so that will be T, right? So, modulators. They control different channels associated with them. Not channels, but uh, like the filters, the volume, the panning uh, can all be controlled by the modulators. And it's specific to Jumbox. Uh, Beatbox does not have the modulators. But Jumbox does, and it's kind of neat. <laughs> so that's why I'm playing with Jumbox. It has a bit more features that came out later. And this is a mod of beatbox, so the original is beatbox. Yeah. Anyhow, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to go to my modulators, and I am going to go pitch one, and filter cut, and I'll probably do pitch one, and filter peak. 
So, let's see what we got. Filter cut. And you can uh, change the patterns of these. So, right now, it's like the filter peak. So, what is going on is I'm going to tell you. These chords are whole notes. And what I'm going to do is chop up the pattern through modulation into a beat pattern using the modulation. So I'm going to adjust the filter, the cutout filter, which I think is a low pass. I don't know if there's other options. So it's just low pass. And peak sets the, I think cut sets the frequency. Well, one is like the cutoff and one is like the resonance in most of other programs. So. But I think they're only low pass. Uh, low pass or band pass, I'm not sure which, but they're. So, let's do. I'm going to do like that. And. Let's see, this is going to do dot, 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 modulation, and these I might change around too. Let's see how it sounds. Oh, you know what? It's pitch two, not pitch one. Let's change that to pitch two. That's right. Anyhow, let's do this. Oh yeah, I gotta add that to every part of here. tricky to adjust these things. So I don't always want to drink. thing is you gotta do this throughout the whole thing. Huh? So I have like 
cord that kind of has a pattern. The modulation. That's the new uh, This is a weird song. Alright. And so there I have the four chord pattern. I've added a beat to follow it and kinda wanna add a bass line type thing. Uh so I don't want a music box here. Let's do another retro thing of The Atari base. And I'm going to follow part of the chords while I'm doing it. Three, three there. I'm following it down. That's the pattern I'm going to go through. So. Yeah. So I'm just going to do that. And here is pattern three. So. Kind of a formula kind of thing. And let's see how that goes. Uh, Alright.
So you can see it builds into something even more fun, right? <laughs> and that's kind of how you build a sign. Uh... And now I need a melodic thing, right? So the melodic part, uh, this is the uh, chord progression and the bass line kind of stuck together. At least in this, and you can split it up and whatever, but this is the basic stuff. Uh, so what's up next? Uh, uh, melody kind of thing, right? I'm not the person to ask about music theory, it's just like stuff I've seen and kind of like how you build songs. So you, some people say to start from the bass line, other people just start off the melody if you have one in your head or something. But I find it's a little easier to build it from the underlying beat and then layer on top, but uh, on occasion I hit something that works the other way around. But <laughs> I'm not that much of a musician, man. Oh, uh, so, it's already starting to sound catchy just by adding those layers, like the chord progression by itself wasn't enough, but you can see that the bass line itself is kind of working towards what the melody can kind of do, so, and adding the pattern to the modulation was kind of neat. Um, I think I'll use the other modulation channel to, like, bring in the song volume, so, because I added two channels, right? So, modulator... Um, because these are separate modulation groups, um, uh, the patterns are different. So, that's why I added a second modulation trick, because I was thinking of doing something with the volume, uh, or I could also do stuff with the tempo, but right now I'm going to just do the, so, modulator one, and the second modulator group is going to be song. And I'll do song volume and now is what I'm gonna do is just gradually start increasing the volume from the start. So If you notice, I'm watching these little numbers because it tells me where the volume is, the score. So if I go to the very first pattern, uh, let's see how that plays out. So this is at 36, if you can see it at the very top. It's probably small unless you've got a full laptop screen, but goes from 18 to 36 and I want to start the next measure at 36 so copy that and I kind of have to drag in here but it's tricky so 5, 3, 6 and I want to bring this up to 55 and not sure what the default full volume is. I think it's like 100 or something. Oh. Um, so it goes. 655. This should go from 55 if I can get it. It's a little finicky. Uh, let's go something like 85. 
So let's see how it is from the start. I just want the volume to fade in over these three three measures or bars or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but notice they're separate patterns for this other modulation. Because if I tried to do this in the same modulation group, because there's different groups for modulations, uh, it wouldn't work for the first one because I'm looping it to do the chord thing, the bounciness there. Uh, so, let's start it and should hear it fade in and I'm just using this one to control volumes. And I can have it fade out too. Uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> this is actually got a bass line has it. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Alright. Oh, yeah, anyway. So you have the looper over here. I think I'm going to kill the bass line in this first chord. So I'll do like it when the song's kind of bored. Weird <laughs> I'm that weird music thing, so... I like to stare at the song's basic and throw on like this. So... We kind of have this chord progression that we can build the melody over... Uh, a melody doesn't have to follow the beat pattern exactly. I mean, it has to relate, of course, but uh, what do we want for the melody? Uh, so, <laughs> this is just to get you started on the idea. You don't have to follow this exactly, uh, just the idea of it. So, That is not loud enough. Uh, sometimes things are louder in different skills. I don't think I want Calliope. Our keyboard presets. Uh, Sex, but it doesn't quite sound like a sex, I don't know why. Uh, I gotta drag the pitch down a bit. Is there something more punchy? Or? It's too reedy. Uh, I guess I could go back to retro and do. Yeah, yes, please. <laughs> that can be punchy. Uh, uh, Further, uh. 
So, let's just play out from here. to try to do some slides. Uh, let's see if I can get it working. I don't know why it doesn't work from the front. Uh, there. So let's do some weird stuff with slides. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't want to let me drag it down. It's really finicky. So...
get funny stuff like that. And <laughs> well, you can get creative with it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do some accents here. Uh, not that. Uh, Hmm, pick the base, uh, I, Alright, uh, <laughs> and layer stuff up like that, and yeah, let's see how it sounds. So, from there you do silly stuff.
know, you get the idea of how ridiculous you can have and build a song out of uh, pretty much nothing uh, on your web browser. So there you go. I know it took a while and I was just messing around, but you kind of get the idea how you can make a song. It's not hard. Uh, and because it's on your browser, you can run it on a tablet or a computer. It doesn't have to be the strongest computer as long as it can run the browser fast enough. I guess the only thing that might be affected by uh, your processor capabilities how many tracks you can add, like here, how many instruments and stuff. It could get a little cluttered or weird if you have a whole lot, but uh, here you go. And uh, you can just like bookmark your song to save it, kind of, and update the bookmark as you go along. So I could do that, but there you go. Just add more layers and your stuff like modulation and drum machine and <laughs> well, you get the idea. And to add more tracks, you can go here and insert bar after, or you can go to edit and change song length and bars per song. And this tells us where it adds more bars, which is at the end. and now you just scroll the bar and that but for like uh, starting to score out it doesn't hurt to loop in a certain spot later on you can loop certain parts or something though and do that export and all that well it's more complicated but like I said you can go down here and read this um, the websites uh, all that they'll have more information it's just enough to uh, get an idea. Uh, something that's kind of fun and neat. And <laughs> it gets my mind off of things, so I thought I'd share it. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Until next time, whenever that is, that's it. Bye.